recently read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear and I have some pretty big realizations about the power of our habits. I used to not pay attention to my habits as I thought they didn't affect the trajectory of my life anyway. I mean, how can my habit of drinking coffee in the morning affect the future of my career? It seems so insignificant to me, and probably to you too, until I read Atomic Habits. According to the book, success is the product of daily habits, not once-in-a-lifetime transformation. We often underestimate the power of our small habits because they're so unnoticeable. But the truth is, our habits are a big deal because they make up who we are. Your net worth is based on your financial habits. Your health is based on your eating and your workout habits. Your knowledge is based on your learning habits. You are your habits. So it goes without saying that habits shouldn't be taken for granted. Small habits make a big difference. So if you want to change your life for the better, you should start by changing your habits. And you can do that by improving even just by 1% every day. That number may seem small, but the difference a tiny improvement can make over time is remarkable. Here's how the book puts it. If you improve 1% every day for a year, you'll end up 37 times better by the end. Conversely, if you get 1% worse every day for a year, you'll decline nearly down to zero. Another example that he used is a direction of a plane. The impact created by a change in your habits is similar to the effect of shifting the route of an airplane by just a few degrees. Imagine you are flying from Los Angeles to New York City. If the pilot adjusts the heading by just 3.5 degrees south, you will land in Washington DC instead of New York City. Such a small change is barely noticeable during takeoff, but when magnified across the United States, you end up 100 miles apart. This means that a tiny course correction of only a few degrees could bring your life to a whole new direction. And since we're on the topic of habits, I thought I'd share some small habits that you can practice now to upgrade your life. These are habits that I personally do myself, or at least I try to make a habit out of. Let's get into it. Personally, I have a love and hate relationship for journaling. I start writing for about a week and then stop. Then I resume a year later. That's my relationship with journaling. And I know I still have a long way to go to make it a habit. But what I notice is that every time I go back and read the entries that I wrote, it makes me feel better about myself because it reminds me of how far I've come and how I've been able to overcome challenges in my life that I thought I would never get out of. I remember reading my journal back in my college days and realize how trivial my problems were back then. And that's kind of an assurance to me that whatever I'm going through in my life, I'll probably look back at this very moment the same way I look at my past problems and just laugh at it. To me, it kind of lessens the magnitude of the problems that I currently have. While some people may view writing as a chore, there's no denying that there are many advantages to journaling on a daily basis that go well beyond improving your writing abilities. Journaling can help lead to self-discovery. It helps you better comprehend your emotions, keep tabs on your own development, and even improve your memory. I have to admit this is another love and hate relationship. Just like journaling, I would go on intense bouts of exercise for a few weeks and then stop. I probably don't need to explain the benefits of exercise to you. You've heard this time and time again. But just in case you need a reminder, studies show that exercise improves your health, increases your energy levels, enhances your mood, and even adds years to your life. If that's not a sure way to upgrade your life, then I don't know what is. And no, you don't have to get a gym membership to exercise regularly. It could be as simple as taking a 15-minute walk in your neighborhood maybe a few times a week. Did you know that a healthy diet is more effective than exercise? While there's no denying that maintaining a healthy body requires exercise, let's face it, not everybody loves to go to the gym. But the good news is that your diet is nearly always the key to maintaining your current weight or losing weight. According to the 80-20 rule, exercise accounts for only 20% of weight loss, while food accounts for 80% of it. If going to the gym isn't your idea of a good time, then maybe you can channel all your energy to preparing nutritious meals in the kitchen instead. I read this saying online. You're currently living in one of the prayers that you use to pray. And this resonated with me so much. Sometimes we're so focused on our goals and all the other things that we need to attain that we tend to neglect all the things that we have now that used to be in that goal list. We forget to appreciate that we've already achieved some of our dreams 
because we're so focused on achieving the next dream. I remember I used to dream about having a MacBook when I was a teenager. Now that I finally have one, I complain that I don't have the latest one. When you don't cultivate gratitude, you will always see what's lacking in your life. So always take the time to be grateful for whatever stage you're at in life. It could be as small as praising the weather that you had for the day, or the delicious cup of coffee that you had, or a thoughtful gesture that you received from a stranger. You can start by listing three things that you're grateful for every night. And they don't have to be big. Blessings that appear small are still blessings. And if you run out of new things to be thankful for every day, you have to remember that it's okay to repeat the things in your gratitude list. A lot of people think that with the gratitude list, you always have to be creative and that you always have to find new things to be thankful for. But no, that's not the point of creating a gratitude list. The point of this list is to appreciate what you already have in your life. And if you still have the house, the car, the job, tomorrow, weeks or months or years from now, then that's still worth acknowledging. It's okay if you keep on repeating those on your gratitude list because they are things that are worth appreciating over and over again in your life. By cultivating gratitude, you're choosing to focus on the abundance in your life rather than the scarcity. It's a small habit, but the impact it can have in your life is profound. Most of the knowledge and the wisdom in life that I have accumulated over the years can be attributed to the books that I've read. I thank God that my mom exposed me to book fairs earlier in my years because I think that really paved the way for my love of reading. I feel like I come out as a much better person after every book I've read because I inherit knowledge from another person that I never would have learned on my own. I gain wisdom without having to go through what that author had to go through. And to me, that's a pretty great gain. So set aside some time every day to read a book that interests you. And no, you don't even have to read a lot in a day. One page a day can open up to a world of wisdom. In our hectic world, sleep is one of those things that we push aside. In fact, it has become so normal in our society to be sleep deprived. Tell me one person you know that boasts on his or her social media that he or she got eight hours of sleep. I bet you can't name one person. Even I can't. But the truth of the matter is, lack of sleep can have long-term negative effects on our health, including mood swings, diabetes, heart disease, and diminished brain function. I know getting more sleep is easier said than done. But you know what? Even though it feels like getting more sleep is impossible, it's a habit, just like anything else, that you can build. Maybe start by lessening your screen time before going to bed so you can dedicate more hours to sleep. Or drink milk right before bed so you can fall asleep easily. Remember that with habits, small changes will yield big results. So much knowledge in the world, what a waste to not have made the most of your life to learn at least some of them. If I did not take the time to learn graphic design, I wouldn't have built my business that now supports my lifestyle. Learning new things not only keeps your mind sharp, but can also pave the way for some life upgrades. So I challenge you to set aside some time each week to learn something new. Maybe that's a topic or a skill that you've always been intrigued about, a musical instrument, graphic design, etc. And no, you don't have to spend money to learn. Almost everything now can be learned through the internet, especially YouTube University. So what are you waiting for? Whenever we feel threatened, our body involuntarily goes to fight, flight, or freeze response. Fight is when you take action and you eliminate the danger. Flight involves escaping the danger. And freeze is, well, freeze, not doing anything. But the thing about threats is our brain does not know the difference between a real threat, like maybe a bear in front of you ready to eat you, and a perceived threat, like maybe you being scared of the future. No matter the threat, your body will respond in either fight, flight, or freeze. And one of the solutions to avoid overreacting to threats, especially when they're perceived threats, is to practice deep breathing. Whenever you're in that kind of situation, stop and take deep, long breaths. What this does is it tranquilizes your nervous system, sending signals to your brain to calm down, leading to improved focus and being able to think properly on how to react to the situation at hand. So whenever you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed, pause and turn your attention to your breath. Draw in a deep breath, hold in for a few seconds, and then slowly exhale. 
Creating a to-do list is hardly a groundbreaking technique, but this is a great way to get organized and prioritize your tasks. Think of where you want to be in the next 5 to 10 years when creating your to-do list. Every task that you have on that to-do list should lead you a step closer to achieving your long-term goals. You see, it always feels like there's so many things that needs to be done, but before you do something, try to evaluate first if these tasks will serve your long-term goal. And if it doesn't, maybe skip it altogether or outsource it to somebody else. When you do this, you can see where you should be spending time more and where you can cut down on some. Don't spread yourself too thin. Always prioritize what will bring you closer to your goal first. And I usually just do this on the Notes app on my phone so I can access it wherever I am. This is one I'm still working on because I'm a terrible people pleaser. I always say yes even though I want to say no because I don't want people to hate me. Being accommodating and helpful is wonderful, but saying yes all the time can lead to stress, exhaustion, and even resentment. Learning to say no when necessary is essential to keeping a positive balance in your life. It makes place for your priorities and enables you to respect your boundaries. So the next time that you're asked to do something and you really don't want to, declining politely is okay. Keep in mind that saying no to other people means saying yes to yourself more, and that's okay. Cultivating a positive mindset doesn't mean ignoring life's problems. It just means that whatever's happening in your life, you approach it with a positive attitude. When you approach something from a place of positivity, it changes your perspectives and your reactions to life events. For example, if you lose in a competition, you have two options. Take it negatively and use it as a reason to never try again, or take it positively and use it as a learning experience to be better next time. Here's the thing, you will not get everything you want in life. You may even face failure, pain, sadness, and frustration. But through all this, remember that your thoughts are yours. No one can dictate the next sentence in your mind. That is for you alone to decide. So no matter what happens, no matter how good or bad things get, use this human privilege of yours in a way that serves you. And one way to do this is to use it by cultivating positive thoughts. How many of you budgets and lists down every single dollar spent every month on a tracking sheet? Financial stress usually comes from a lack of control over your finances. And the way to be in control of your finances is, you guessed it, budgeting. Budgeting provides a clear overview of your income and your expenses. It allows you to take control of your financial situation. When you don't have a budget, you don't have a limit to how much you can spend. And when you don't impose limits on yourself, you tend to act irresponsibly. When you establish spending limits, you can avoid overspending and make informed decisions on how to allocate your hard-earned money. I used to hate budgeting because it felt like one of those chores that needed to be done. But let me tell you, my financial situation improved tremendously when I forced myself to examine my spending habits closely. Remember that understanding where your money goes is the first step toward making responsible financial choices. I personally use Google Sheets for my budgeting and a free app on my phone called Fudget. Not only are you the sum of the five people that you spend your time with, but you are also the sum of the five people you interact on social media. Let's face it, not everybody that you follow on social media provides you with good vibes. Some of them are only sources of negativity. And since you are what you consume, you have to be mindful of the things that you expose yourself to on social media. If an account doesn't give you happiness, confidence, or inspiration, I say it's time to unfollow or mute them. Trust me, you don't need that negativity in your life. Emotions such as anger, frustration, or sadness can distort your perception of reality and cloud your judgment. Decisions made under the influence of these emotions might not reflect your true choices or values, and this can lead to regret once your emotions subside. I can't tell you how many times I've regretted a decision all because I made it in the heat of an argument. So do yourself a favor and avoid decision making at all costs whenever you're having these emotions. I'm sure this happened to you where after a day or or two, you feel differently and you thank the heavens you did not act impulsively on the situation. Distance yourself from the situation, allow yourself to calm down first, maybe practice deep breathings, and think. I hope this video helped you. If it did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Let me know what your favorite habits are in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!